What's up, and welcome back to another episode of DNR Sports. I'm Richie, and today I will be going over the 2021 New York Giants roster, as well as giving my record prediction and fantasy relevant players for this team. Uh, I am a Giants fan, so I'm going to try to be unbiased as possible. I'll try to make it fair and try to not gush over any deep roster players that I think are better than other teams' deep roster players. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to get right into it, starting with the quarterback position and Daniel Jones. As many of you know, Daniel Jones has been a, um, I'll say, disappointment over the last few years. Um, he's been very up or down, having some games playing really well, others not so much. Um, he is going into his third year, second year under Office of a Coordinator Jason Garrett, um, and second year under head coach Joe Judge. So, um, personally, I don't have the highest expectations for Jones. I just think if he can fix his turnover issue and his pocket awareness, I think he could be a very solid quarterback. As you've seen from some of the some of the pictures and some of the videos you've seen, um, he, he has gotten bigger. Uh, he has been working out, which probably helps with his arm strength because it was kind of lackluster going into the league. So um, I'm actually kind of excited for Jones this season, uh, only because of what they did on the offensive side of the ball. So I'll start with um, I'll start with the wide receiver position. I'll skip running back for now. Um, they signed Kenny Galladay, who was um, obviously the number one wide receiver from Detroit um, for the last few seasons. Uh, I think he can be a very good go and get it jump ball type receiver. Um, something that Daniel Jones actually does really well. He's really good at um, positioning the ball and placing it in a spot where only his receiver can make a play on it. Um, and he was trying to fit in and, and make Slayton that receiver, but I don't think Slayton's that, that guy, uh, or at least not yet. Um, but obviously, this wide receiver group is now stacked. Uh, I do actually want to take a quick peek at last year's wide receiver group. So this was in February excuse me, early February, and this is what the offense looked like. Um, we'll, we'll start the receivers. This is on our lads. And <clears throat> as you can see, Darius Slayton was the one. Sterling Shepard was the two on the outside, um, not his natural position. He was drafted to be a slot wide receiver. And we had Golden Tate washed, old Golden Tate, who did not want to be there because of lack of targets. He didn't like what was going on uh, in the Giants. So there's a huge upgrade now, <laughs> obviously, um, for this team. Um, obviously, they signed Kenny Galladay. Uh, Shepard will go back to the slot and split time with Kadarius Tony, who was their first round wide receiver draftee out of Florida. Uh, Slayton will now be the wide receiver two definitively and actually probably split some snaps with Shepard or Tony, depending on the formation. Um, so I'm actually really excited for this offense and this wide receiver group because they needed a guy. They needed a, a, a number one wide receiver to make everything else uh, easier for the other guys. Um, they had Odell. I miss Odell. But now we got Galladay, so can't really complain. Um, at tight end, they have Evan Ingram, who's been, um, I guess, on the on the cusp of breaking out for the past few seasons now. Hopefully he does. Um, his drops have been a major issue, um, starting even back to when he was a rookie a bit. So I'm really hoping that maybe this is the year that he can finally put it together. But we've been saying that every year, so not too high expectations for him, but... but if he can if he can play decently, I think he could be a, a, a very good weapon for this team. They also signed Kyle Rudolph from Minnesota, who's going to be a very good tight end too. Um, he's good at blocking. He's very good in the red zone. Has very solid hands, which is something that uh, the Giants need. A reliable catching tight end who can make plays in the red zone. Um, and obviously now going back to running back, they're getting back Saquon Barkley. Um, they signed Devontae Booker from the Raiders, um, and they signed. I'll skip over Armstead and just go to Corey Clement, who can be, um, you know, outside of Barkley, another another receiving back, um, which could be really good for this backfield. Uh, again, I'd like to take a look at um, the roster last year and go to running back. And you can see Wayne Gallman, very solid running back. I think he's more of a running back two, in my opinion, but he was the one at running back one, obviously, because Saquon towards ACL. Deion Lewis, who at this point is career washed, um, was mainly only a third down running back. Um, catching the ball only, and Alfred Morris, who is probably closer to 34. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited for the for the weapons for this for this offense. Um, I really think that um, if everything goes well with the offensive line and with Daniel Jones, this could be um, hopefully a middle of the pack offense. But again, there's a lot of pieces that have to make that work. Obviously, offensive coordinator Jason Garrett has to uh, call the right plays, not be so predictable, make the offense more lively. Uh, Daniel Jones has to play well. And now the biggest question mark, at least in my opinion, the offensive line, 
Um, here they have Nate Soldier, Soldier as the starting left tackle. I'm actually going to go back to our lads for that one. Um, looking at the offensive line right here. So Andrew Thomas, um, obviously fourth overall draft pick of uh, the previous draft, last year's draft. Um, it's it's this as a whole, this offensive line needs to take a step up and um, they need to just develop pretty much as players because three out of the five starting offensive linemen were drafted in the 2020 draft. So um, if Andrew Thomas, Shane Lemieux, Shane Lemieux, who was drafted in the fifth round, and Matt Pert, who was drafted in the third round, can all take a step up and play better than their rookie season, I think that's going to be a huge help for this offensive line. Um, Nick Gates is going to his second year at the, at the center position, but he's very flexible. He can move around the offensive line. Uh, and also Will Hernandez going into a contract year. Maybe he plays well. Maybe he plays better than he, he has been um, because of that urgency, because of that he wants to earn the money. He wants to uh, get paid big. Um, but going back to ESPN now, so obviously those are, I think those are going to be the starting five. I'm pretty sure uh, in that order as well. Lemieux at left guard and um, Hernandez at right guard. But then they also signed some guys and they have bringing some guys back. So Nate Solder uh, took the year off due to, due to COVID and family concerns. He's coming back um, on a cheap deal, by the way. I, I love Nate Solder for that. He's a, he's a team player. He's shown it. Um, I love him as a guy. Um, he's, he, I'm, I'm excited and I, I'm proud that he's a New York Giant. Um as well as that, they signed. Um, is he not here? Wow, ESPN is cheeks. I'm going to go back to it, y'all lads. Um, they signed Zach Fulton from Houston, who gave up the most sacks last year. But, you know, um, he's a dude, I guess. And they signed uh, Jonathan Harrison from the Jets, who couldn't be a backup center for Nick Gates, just in case, because there's always injuries. That's another thing for this team. I'm actually very excited for the depth we have. Instead of just being, you know, like this is last year, like, Outside of Slayton, uh, Darius, and Golden Tate, um, we had Dante Pettis as the four. So <laughs> I'm really excited for the, what this team can do offensively. Uh, again, I think I'm hoping that they can be a top 16 unit. <laughs> if they can just be middle of the pack, I think that'll be amazing for this team. Because when you go to defense, you can see that this is really the strength of the team. This is where they're going to make their money. Uh, this is how they're going to win games. So obviously... Starting on the defensive line, they re-signed Leonard Williams to about a three-year, $60 million, million dollar contract. Was he overpaid a little bit? Maybe. But um, if he can continue getting double-digit sacks every year, that'll be definitely worth the pay, uh, worth the payday. Um, they did lose Dalvin Tomlinson to the to the uh, Vikings, but they signed Danny Shelton, who, who offers similar um, similar style of play in terms of stopping the run. Um, doesn't offer the same pass-rushing upside that Dalvin Tomlinson had, but... Tomlinson was never really a good pass rusher anyway. So I really like this sneaky signing by the Giants uh, and Danny Shelton. They also re-signed Austin Johnson and BJ Hill still there. So um, nice, uh, good depth pieces for this defensive line. And obviously, sexy Dexy, <laughs> Dexter Lawrence, uh, he's coming back and his third year. So he should be able to make some type of play. Uh, he's been very solid in, in helping force and eat up double teams um, for, the, for the other guys in the defense. Um, now going back. ESPN. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. this. is all over the place. Um, I'm going to go start with off-ball linebacker. They're returning their captain, Blake Martinez. Uh, they signed Reggie Raglan, who uh, neither of them are really good in pass coverage, but they're both very solid at stopping the run. Um, pass coverage will be solved at, at, um, in another aspect for this defense, but I'll get to that a little bit later. They're also um, trying out Carter Coughlin and Tate Crowder at the off-ball linebacker position. Tate Crowder obviously was already there, but um, he's a late-round rookie from the 2021, 2020 class, uh, draft class, so uh, this will be new for Carter Coughlin, but um, Carter Coughlin showed he was patient and good on stunts, so uh, hopefully um, this transition isn't too bad for him. Now going to the edge defenders, uh, Lorenzo Carter and O'Shane Zimit Zimitez are coming back after basically missing the entire year. Uh, I know Carter uh, had an Achilles injury, missed the entire year. Uh, Zimitez was here and there, but for the most part missed the entire season. Um, you can even see he's still questionable, according to ESPN. So uh, I think those two coming back are going to be really helpful because Carter was actually lighting it up in camp, uh, if if you remember, for the Giants fans out there. He was lighting it up in camp and actually uh, making a ton of plays before he went down with his injury. So uh, I really hope that he can play well also in a contract year um, and kind of show off, show out and uh, show off and uh, play really well. They also uh, drafted Oziz, Aziz Ojolari from Georgia who I'm really excited about, actually. Um, I think he has some type of degenerate knee problem, um, but obviously it wasn't enough to deter the Giants, uh, and they, they went and, and honestly stole him. He was arguably a first-round talent, took him 
even traded back in the second round and still got him. So uh, I love that pickup, uh, as well as uh, Odenabo and Anderson, um, one from Minnesota and the the latter from from Washington. I think they could be very solid. Uh, there's honestly like a ton of guys here because uh, you know, I'm not even talking about Cam Brown, Ellerson Smith, who they drafted uh, in this year's draft. Um, ton of guys here. I, I think there's going to be some cuts that people are going to people are going to hate, people aren't going to like, but um, but gonna need, they're going to need to happen because there are a lot of guys here. Uh, none of them are particularly amazing, but I think that uh, I think this linebacking group is a lot better. Uh, there's going to be a lot of competition, which is really nice. But now going on to the the secondary, uh, in my opinion, a top five secondary in the NFL. PFF grades them as the top seven, uh, as the seventh best. Um, I disagree. I think they're they're top five. But besides that, uh, obviously James Barry, Bradbury coming back, he played at a top ten corner level last year. You can even argue he was a top five corner. Um, and they signed Adore Jackson from Tennessee. Biggest problem concerned with Jackson is his injury history, but if he can stay healthy, um, this team's going to be very solid because the one weakness for the Giants last year was their qu- cornerback too, and they solved it. Um, did they overpay a little bit? Sure, but um, they're in a win-now situation, and I think this defense is going to benefit greatly from Jackson signing. Um, they also are returning Darnay Holmes, was, who was a very, very solid slot wide receiver slot cornerback <laughs> uh, and he was even he was a rookie last year too which is even more impressive they also drafted uh aaron robinson out of ucf who is also a very slot solid slot cornerback in his own right so uh that should create a lot of competition in camp and you know best man best man wins best man plays now going to the safety position they have jabril peppers logan ryan logan ryan kind of having a, a a late year a late career um resurgence i guess uh, I know he's always very solid, but uh, so, switched him to safety, and he played very well last year for the Giants. Uh, same with Jarrell Peppers, uh, played better in the latter half of the year. Um, and they also have a second-year cor- uh, safety, Xavier McKinney, who uh, they drafted out of Alabama in the 2020 draft in the second round, who I'm actually really excited for. So going back to the linebacker issue, we don't have a ton of good covered linebackers, off-ball linebackers, but we have too many safeties. I, I don't think you can actually have too many of a good position, but we do. Um, and so I actually really like that. So Peppers can play in the box or maybe a Julian Love, who I didn't even mention yet, could play in the box. Um, and that can kind of fill for our coverage uh, weakness at linebacker. So I'm actually really excited for this team. Um, obviously, special teams. Graham Bino's Graham good. Ronnie Dixon's meh. But um, as far as the record, I'd say, for this team goes, um, I'm trying not to be too high on this team because every time I get really high, they always disappoint. So I think I'll say 9-8. and eight. Obviously, there's 17 games now, uh, 18 weeks, 17 games for each team. I'll go nine and eight. But if everything goes well with the offense and the defense keeps rolling and plays like a top 10 unit like they were last year, I think they could they could get maybe 11 or 12 wins. Um, but then there's also a floor. Obviously, if Jones sucks, the offensive line sucks, defense takes a step back. This team can definitely go like six and 11, something like that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go nine and eight for this team. Uh, as far as fantasy relevant players, if Jones takes that step that we're all hoping that he does, I think that he could be um, maybe a top 15 fantasy quarterback, but that's not really what you want. Um, obviously, he I think he could be uh, a solid um, week-to-week quarterback. Depending on the matchup, he can come in and play well. Uh, obviously, Saquon, once he's fully healthy, Saquon's going to be a monster. He'll hopefully get 20, 25 to uh, 30 touches per game, uh, and that includes you know, catching as well, which is more valuable in PPR format. Um, as far as wide receivers go, I'm not sure if I can trust any one guy here. Obviously, my bet would be Kenny Galladay if there was one that would, would play well. Um, I would also say maybe Shepard. But uh, I would say those two are the only two that could have really fantasy-relevant seasons. But again, not like any wide receiver one for your team, maybe um, a low-end wide receiver two or wide receiver three. For your fantasy team, um, if I honestly, truly, I think on this offense, Evan Ingram has the biggest chance of becoming that guy because tight end is way more valuable for a fantasy league um, and for your fantasy team because there are not that many great guys. So if Evan can just become good and fix the drops um, and and become that tight end that we all know he can be, he's seen it, he's flashed, he can not be as good as Kelsey, but maybe in the tier or two tiers below Kelsey, I think he could be there, definitely like a top five guy. Um because he's probably about a top 10 guy at the moment. So I'm uh, really excited for this team. Regardless, um, I think we have a lot of pieces. and the Giants could be pretty solid this year. Try not to tamper expectations. But, uh, but with that being said, this was my uh, Giants, New York Giants uh, depth chart review. Um, if you guys agree, 
let me know if you guys don't agree and there's someone I missed or, or didn't talk about, let us know in the comments. Um, if you guys made it this far, we would really, really appreciate it. If you could like, subscribe, click the bell, uh, get all our notifications for this channel. But with that being said, I've been Richie. This is DNR Sports. Thank you for watching. Feels right.